Hello, Western. So, I'd like to pick up from where we left off in the previous video and begin talking about a very specific type of wave, and that's sciusoidal waves. So, if we think about in the previous video, I had waves that maybe look like this, these little sort of pulse-like shapes. And that's a perfectly fine example of a wave. A wave could definitely look like that. However, it turns out that it's very advantageous to consider waves that have sciusoidal shapes like this. So that's a wave that can be described by a sine or a cosine function. And if we think about the displacement of a single point on a string that has a sciusoidal wave, it's going to move up and down, and it's just going to undergo simple harmonic motion as the wave passes through that point. Now, it may seem like this is a bit of an idealization, and you may question how useful sciusoidal waves really are. However, it turns out sciusoidal waves are incredibly useful because any wave, no matter what its shape is, can be expressed as a sum of sciusoidal waves. So to illustrate that point, on this next slide, I have at the top a pulse that's traveling to the right. And underneath it, I have 10 sciusoidal waves. They're actually standing waves. And what we can see is by adding up these 10 waves at the bottom, I can create this wave at the top. So I can create this pulse-like shape by just adding up 10 sine and cosine functions. And in fact, in a later video, I'm going to show what happens to a wave when it bounces off of two fixed ends, which we can actually see here when I add up, I think, maybe a thousand sine and cosine functions. So we'll get a very nice pulse-like shape when we do that. So how do we describe sciusoidal waves? Well, as far as the spatial displacement of the waves is, the maximum displacement from equilibrium, so this line down here represents equilibrium, the maximum distance the particle is displaced from equilibrium is called the amplitude, which I have written down here. Now, the distance between the crests of a wave, so the maximum of the waves, is equal to the wavelength. So the wavelength describes how far apart the waves are in space. Now, the next thing I want to think about is what happens to a single point on this uh, string, or whatever this is, as the wave passes through it. So for example, as this wave moves to the right, this point's going to move up, and then it's going to travel back down, and then eventually it's going to come back up again. Okay, And so that single point is going to undergo simple harmonic motion. So if I plot its position versus time, I'm going to get something like this. And once again, we can describe simple harmonic motion using the same types of things we did before when we studied simple harmonic motion. So remember that the amount of time for the particle to undergo one full oscillation, so that's this kind of thing here, is equal to the period of the motion. And we said that the frequency is the number of oscillations that the wave undergoes in a single point. And that's related to the period, remember, by this. The frequency is 1 divided by the period. And so I think that's where I'd like to leave off with this video. And in the next video, we're going to begin studying uh, the speed of a wave and how we could calculate the speed of a wave and also what types of variables affect the speed of a wave in, say, air or on a string.